Hi everyone, welcome, how are you? Happy Tuesday, that's the day it is today. Um, today I'm gonna to be diving into some Pinterest questions that I received. Um, so I'll wait a second to see if everybody can join. I'll have a sip of my water. For those of you who are new to the group, hello, my name is Sheila Smyers. I am a blogging success coach. I run the website, The Productive Blogger. I run this group here and I work with clients one-on-one -on -one and in a group setting, teaching them different best practices and systems and strategies to kind of streamline their blogging process and to become more productive so they can increase growth and monetization. I also am a blogger myself. I run She Smiles All Day. It's a fashion and lifestyle blog. So that's a little bit about me. For those of you who are new to the group, welcome. I'm gonna be digging into Pinterest, not completely because that would take me hours, but I'm gonna be specifically talking about how you can create a really quality pin that will help drive traffic to your site. So to start out, one of the most important things to cover is why Pinterest is so important. So Pinterest, first of all, it's free, obviously. It's free marketing for your website. It is a search engine that you can use. Obviously, we're all familiar with Pinterest, and if you think about yourself as a Pinterest user, if you're someone who's on it, which you probably are, think about how many times you check it for outfit ideas, you check it for recipes, you check it for arts and crafts for your kids. You know, there's so many different uses and so many different ways that we use Pinterest to find information, and the best part is that as a blogger, it's free to use, right? So you you can upload a pin, link it to your website, and if you're pinning consistently, if you're joining group boards, if you're very active on Pinterest, then you're gonna be organically growing your following there, and you're gonna have your pin um, get more exposure, and therefore it leads traffic to your website, right? Because when we click on a pin and we're like, ooh, that sounds really interesting, that's exactly the answer to my problem, it leads us to a blog post like nine times out of 10. Like sometimes it's just a like, general website, but typically not, right? So thinking about how we can leverage Pinterest, but one aspect of that is obviously having a great pin. You could have an amazing following on Pinterest. You could be on a ton of different group boards with tons of different exposure, but if your pins are not standing out, if your pins are not high quality, if they don't look good, if they're not enticing, um, if they don't you know, catch your reader's attention really quickly, then you're not gonna find a lot of traffic going to your website. So today we're gonna kind of talk about a few different ways that you can create a really quality pin and what to look for. But first, I kind of want to show you guys an example of what a bad pin is. So I'm going to be showing you on my phone, um, on my phone screen, some pins that are not high quality. Um, and then I'll also be posting here in the group actual pictures and images and examples, as I know it's going to be kind of hard to see. But just for the purposes of this quick training, I kind of wanted to just like pull it up. I don't even have anything prepared on here or saved. I'm just going to pull up Pinterest and see what pops up. So for me, I follow a lot of fashion stuff. I follow a lot of things about blogging because I'm always trying to educate myself. So here's, let's see, a good example of like a not so great blog post would be, this is kind of funny, but this is a clued in murder mystery scavenger hunt, which actually is something I am doing. Me and my cousin are going to have a New Year's Eve party and we're theming it like a murder mystery theme. But so that's something that I recently searched for. But this pin is not at all enticing. If you look, it's like pretty small, right? It's not that typical long and vertical. So if I hadn't been looking for a bad pin, I would not have noticed this. It kind of looks like an ad too. It just looks weird. I would not have clicked on it. Um, the font's pretty small again, because it's not long and vertical, it's kind of hard to see. There's all these small images, it's just not exactly bringing me in or you know enticing to me. And it took me a second to even see what it was. I didn't even realize that's what it was when I first looked at it. I just thought it was something random. Um, so definitely not. But if we keep scrolling, let me show you an example. And I actually have a few that are really enticing. So this one right here is a really, really good one. So it says, 15 free blogging tools to grow your blog and biz without spending a dime. So the picture itself is super enticing, right? She's on a laptop that already kind of gets, catches my attention as someone who's really interested in educating myself on all things blogging. The font is really bold. I can read it really easily. Um, you know, I am really into this pen. It's long and vertical. If I keep looking, there's things like, what kind of blog should I start? That's super bold with the yellow. Again, it has a laptop, a great visual, really, really enticing. Um, and then there's SEO for beginners, also really bright with the colors, like a really beautiful pin too. The font is really fun, but you can still read it really easily. So those are just a couple of examples. So 
I kind of mentioned a few things about what made those pins really high quality, what made them really jump out to me. So to kind of break it down, a few things you want to think about. So the first thing is obviously it needs to be legible. Um, we all love a good font. We all love a good cursive font or being cute. And those are great for graphics on your website um, or in a Facebook group here or something where, you know, it's not like, I don't want to say life or death, but it's not like, I need this person to look at this right now. Um, but for a pin, like, obviously, like, it's, you're just scrolling through. There's so many different ones. It's endless, right? So it takes a lot for it to really jump out at someone and for them to say, like, yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. This has caught my eye. So you want to make sure that they can read it, right? I scroll past things if they're too squiggly because I just can't read it. I don't see it. It's like, it's almost like my brain doesn't even register it when I'm looking on Pinterest because I'm looking for something to pop out at me and I want to be able to read it really quickly. So making sure the font itself is really bold is not washed out with color like don't do it in yellow or green or anything that's going to be too bright or difficult to read just making sure it's big it's bold and it's really legible um, the next thing is that you want to make sure that your actual image is really clear and crisp and also relevant of course too so for me like i said i do a lot of research on blogging so i can keep myself up to date and educated for you guys so if i am someone who's learning how to you know learning about blogging looking for tips like that then I'm looking for images like a laptop you know like a camera things like that where I'll see that and I'll think yes that's what I'm looking for if someone is looking for an amazing pie recipe and you have pictures of like I don't know like a dinner table or something and it's just like not quite that like why wouldn't you have a picture of a pie or an oven or baking tools or something like that. Clearly I don't bake since I just call it baking tools, but you guys get what I'm saying. So what kind of image do you have? Does it make sense? Is it going to, you know, really tell that Pinterest user like, yes, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Is it clear or is it low quality? Is it kind of blurry? Is it something you took yourself that's not your best work? Is it a stock photo that's not that great? Like making sure that you're choosing photos that are actually great that are actually clear and crisp and enticing um so and the next thing that you want to do obviously and i am also looking at notes so bear with me while i keep looking over here is make sure that it passes the mobile test so obviously i showed you all of these pins on my phone and the reason i did that is because I think it's something like 80 or 90% of Pinterest users use their phones. So if you are on your laptop and you've created this amazing pin with a website called Canva, which is what I use, it might look really good. The picture might look super crisp, the font super bold. It's like very eye catching. Even when you posted it and you're looking at it amongst all the other pins, you're like, yeah, this is amazing. But if you look on your phone, it might not be as amazing as you think it is. So definitely after you post it, take a look at your phone and see if it actually is a, as eye-catching as you think. Always make sure it's vertical because a little, you know, most of them are. And so when you have just like a little tiny square one, it just really doesn't pop out. Like look at this right here. Look at, I'm just scrolling past it. I don't even know what that is. It's a nail polish polish. It's a nail color polish. Nail polish color. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. But it's not what I'm looking for. It's not at all enticing to me. And it's, I barely saw it. It's making sure it's vertical, making sure it's bold, and making sure it works on your phone. And then also when you're uploading your images to and you're uploading your pins, making sure that you're being really rich with keywords in your description. Um, and you can do it like you can literally just do it as if you're tagging something and just put like, you know, again, to use the pie example, put like pumpkin pie, comma, you know, holiday treat, comma, like and just put keywords. Or you can actually give them a description, which is like what I like to do and kind of describe what that post is about while using really great keywords and making sure that it's really clear about um, what they're going to actually find when they click and go to my blog, but also like using keywords that I know people are going to be searching for for SEO purposes. So it's easier for your pin to get found. Um, let's see. And then obviously, just like you would put time and effort into creating a really enticing blog title for your post, you're also going to want to do the same thing for your pin and you know that might be as easy as just copying it like you might actually use the title of your blog post for your pin or you might not it's gonna depend um, sometimes I like to make multiple ones and kind of play around with it and see which one is the best see which ones definitely like you know catch the attention of my potential readers the most so you can kind of play around with it but you still want to make sure you know if you spent all this time and effort into creating like a really quality blog post and then you title it something I think I was talking about this the other day like how I landscaped my yard or like 
you know, my favorite clothes for fall. Like those aren't really great titles. Those don't really make me want to read it. But by saying something like, you know, your ultimate guide to like fall fashion or, you know, 10 ways to update your fall wardrobe, you know, on a budget, like things like that are a lot more enticing to people than just being like, this is my fall wardrobe or whatever it is that you're writing about. So making sure that your pins have really strong titles as well. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, wait, one more thing. If you have Pinterest and you haven't switched your account over to a business account, you should. One, it's free. Two, you get rich pins. And rich pins, just essentially like for any business or any blog, once you have a business account, your pins show up as rich pins. I'll definitely post an example of mine for you guys so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, but it just looks more official. They're way more eye-catching because not everybody has them. It links directly to your website. It shows that it's from your website. You just look a lot more professional and official, and um, it's a really great option if you're looking to do something for free that will kind of you know, enhance your Pinterest presence anyway. And I've been talking about this a lot lately about analytics and using your numbers to tell a story about um, your traffic and how your blog is doing. When you have a business account, you also get access to Pinterest analytics. So you can see how those pins are performing. Uh, so I think that's basically everything. I kind of just wanted to hop on here and answer that question. I think it was Nina who asked it specifically, and I get questions about it too fairly often. But yes, you want to make sure that you're spending time on your pins. You don't want to just be going to your blog post on your website and clicking the pin option and then just pinning any image. You definitely don't want to just pin an image from your blog post. It should be pinnable. It should have text on it. It should be long and vertical. And something you can do too is you can actually create these pins, right? Um, and like I said, I use Canva, super easy, it's free, but you can create your pins and you can make that your feature image or you can make it an image on your blog posts um, and have, I think, I don't know which what it's called for WordPress, um, that's what I use, but there's a widget I use. I'll try to find out for you guys and I'll put it here, but you can have it so anytime someone covers over an image, it has like a little pop-up that says pin this. So you can have pre-made pin images on your website, on your blog, so when you do have people looking at it who weren't there from Pinterest, or maybe they are, they'll be like, ooh, I'm gonna pin this because I loved this, I wanna save it, I wanna look back at it, um, I wanna be able to refer to this again, and you already have this amazing pin created for them versus them pinning just any old picture, and that way, when they're repinning it, obviously it goes back out into the Pinterest world, other people are seeing it, and you still have this great branded pin ready to go to really bring in that traffic, so. That basically sums it up. If you're watching the replay, definitely feel free to leave comments below. Um, in the comments, just let me know if you have any questions about what we went over today, if you have any comments, if you want to see any more examples. Like I said, I'll be leaving some examples in the group in just a few moments so you can, guys can kind of see up close what I'm talking about. I really hope this was useful for you. Definitely let me know if there's anything specific on your mind so I can um, come back tomorrow with another live video for you guys, giving you the tips and tricks that you need that's gonna matter most to you and your blogging business. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and an amazing week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.